All right, so welcome back. Uh, we're gonna start the second session of the day one. We're gonna be discussing about the metadata we are going to be used the whole week. And for this, we have uh, we're lovely colleague Vittoria, who's going to be presenting because she's part of the WHO or packages team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. She can introduce herself. So, Vittoria, uh, floor is yours. And then, whenever you're done, I will be back here to take us when you leave. First, when you leave. Sure. Well, um, quick introduction. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm Victoria. I work in the implementation team. And uh, as Jaime said, we are, like, especially in the package team, let's say, what's it, what we informally call it, um, which is like among the many things. It's also responsible to put out the metadata packages based on the, the global uh, guidelines that um, our counterparts and stakeholders uh, release. So yeah, I'm more. I'm not an IT person. I am more on the health content side of things. But um, but yeah, happy to be here with you. All. Um, oh, okay, so you go directly there. So, okay, so um, super quick introduction, just to get you acquainted a little bit of how these uh, um, packages work a little bit. So what we normally do um, as um, a WHO collaborating center, um, we receive the, um, the global guidance that uh, our counterparts, in this case, the WHO, of course, but could be UNICEF, could be CDC, could be, uh, other different organizations. It doesn't necessarily have to be WHO. Um, and we uh, get these, these guidance and we try to kind of translate them, like you translate for French, Spanish, and other languages. Um, the text in the guidance needs to be somehow translated into, into metadata packages. So we try to turn them into logical um, data points that people can collect either in aggregate or tracker. And um, and this feeds it fits into the, the national or local, depending on the implementation, HMIS systems that, I mean, you might have seen it if you're more acquainted with the HIS overall. There are like plenty of countries that are already using these, these, uh, these um, the DHS2 as a national, DH, uh, as national HMIS system. And, uh, and these packages that we put out are very flexible. We put out a, a baseline package, let's say, uh, that reflects the global guidelines that we receive. Uh, but these packages can be then expanded, changed, and, uh, and in general modified to better mirror the, the local environments and the local necessities of, of the countries. Next, please. So uh, this is just a, um, a, a quick graph to make you understand how the, the life cycle of a, of a package works for us. So once we receive the package, uh, in this case, for example, uh, it was because we are using the, the, the case surveillance uh, for, for COVID. Uh, in this case, it was like the global surveillance for COVID that it was based, uh, it was based on the guidelines that was released uh, on, in March 2020 back then. Um, we receive these uh, these requirements, and then we start configuring things, and we get start getting feedback and testing from our counterparts. Of course, in this case, the WHO team, but also we start checking out with our with our um, HISP networks, with other countries that we know have had similar implementations. And once we start releasing and disseminating these packages, of course, it kind of it's a continuous uh, development of packages. So we start um, checking in with the countries that have implemented it. We start checking in with other with our his counterparts and such, and we start like learning from from their implementations. So we know how to guide other implementation better in some cases, but also to to see what's working and what not uh, in these in these packages. So we can constantly try to improve them. Next. Yes, so um, just to give you also a quick overview of how we release our packages. Normally in, I mean, you can find them in, uh, in the website, in the link that you have down there in the metadata package download. We normally put out always a design document and an installation guide uh, for every package. And these design documents is normally kind of justifying the way things have been configured, like in the sense why things look that way, what's the logic behind things, and how people, maybe some suggestions on how countries in general, like even private people that are doing implementation for their own organization or project, uh, can uh, um, change and adapt things to better mirror their context. Then in the largest majorities, but it's a 
continuous development as well. Like we have also training materials so that you can have either training of trainers or you can just train people who are going to collect this information. So you can have a round implementation of thing. And then you have the metadata package um, that is based also on the different versions of the HIS that you can that you can uh, um, implement. We normally support by default three, the past three um, versions, let's say. And then you have the references that is like a flat file, let's say, um, where you can have a, just a general quick a glance overview of all the metadata that you have in the package. So you can have a quick idea of how you might want to uh, edit or expand or remove the metadata that comes with the core baseline packages. Um, next, please. So uh, as you see, we have put out the um, for COVID, the COVID surveillance and the COVID vaccination toolkits. Um, you see down there in the maps, it has been uptaken definitely widely and in a very short time. And, uh, and it, the HRS has expanded a lot in, in the meantime. And, uh, and yes, you see like uh, the surveillance is, is using more than 40 countries. A vaccination toolkit as well like uh, it's uh, it has expanded a lot lately and um, and yes it, it just can be used as a baseline upon which people um, countries can develop their own either surveillance so you can accelerate your case detection you can report cases and such but also the vaccination toolkit so you can you can uh, um, strengthen the immunization system but also um, kind of like Kind of like leverage the local expertise so you can expand on the topic let's say and then finally next please just to give you an overview of how the the the, the packages the metadata packages for the covid in general um since the, the the academy is going to be based on surveillance but just to give you an idea of how things are are structured within the covid19 data we have our surveillance branch where you have your integrated disease surveillance, the IDSR that is aggregate. And then you have the case-based surveillance um, for, for COVID, the contact tracing. So you can just follow up the different cases that you are tracking. And of course the point of entry. So you can um, have a surveillance of all the people that are coming in and out within a country, be it at the airport, be it like on road, um, any kind of point of entry from a country. And then on the other branch, we have the vaccination. Uh, where we have the logistics side of things. So we have a, a quick aggregate uh, um, metadata package for stock. And then you have the vaccination. So you can either have the core um, vaccination for aggregate is where you have just like a wrap up of the core indicators for to like follow up your vaccination activities or, oh dear, it's still, it's still in French, but it's the AFI, so the adverse event um, surveillance. Um, that it's a tracker. And then of course you have the e-registry vaccination that is again a tracker that you can use to add either integrate the AFI, but like in general to follow up the vaccination activities with like longitudinal data on each and every patient. Next. And here just a, like a, a quick overview of what you can find by default in the in the COVID surveillance that metadata package. So as I said, you have the point of entry. So you have the overview of the of the movements of people. You have the contact tracing, so you can just uh, con like check out who is touching what, when, how, and you can just like uh, improve your general, um, yeah, let's say prevention and and uh, prevention and uh, controlling like uh, activities of the infection. Then you have your surveillance module, so uh, you can just like track longitudinally your patients. Uh, from uh, from uh, entry in the in the cohort up until the their outcome, and then together with that you have by default always some predefined dashboards that are just like a guideline for you with some predefined um, graphs tables that you can just use to uh, adapt better your dashboards uh, at local level, and um, of course with the with the with the default in dashboards you also have like a lot of maps normally for at least the computer side of things um, that you can use to check better like the distribution, especially if you have like point of entry and contact tracing, you might want to see where these cases are. And, but most importantly, when you are using the metadata packages as they are, um, but even edited, you will have the possibility to then download other packages and use these packages to um, analyze your data, but most importantly, to triangulate your data, to have a better 
follow-up of the situation, but I have an integrated um, follow-up of the, of the situation, be it for COVID, but could be for any other package, could be HIV and TB, could be any other package. And so you can just like uh, see and, uh, and better organize your activity depending on the, on, the, um, on the general overview that you might get from this dashboard of the current situation in your country or in your project. So yeah, that was just like a quick, very quick overview. Um, we have plenty of links and and source and resources where you can find your um, the metadata packages. And um, and yeah, I mean, I go back to to Jaime, but I'm I'm like lagging here behind the scene. So if you have any any questions specifically on metadata packages, uh, if you please feel free to like write a comment uh, or a question in the chat, and I'll try to answer. So, so thank you very much. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you very much. Um, one second, I'm gonna put my camera. Yes. Okay, so Victoria has given you a very quick overview of what they do. And in the past we used to have, for this training, we used to have malaria the malaria packets because it contained everything we wanted. But uh, since pandemic started like two years ago, we decided that it was gonna be a better idea to have something that we are more used to. And that's the reason we're using the COVID-19 digital packets prepared by the Victoria and her team. And um, the reason we use this package is because it contains everything we might need in the train, and you will see how we use pretty much the package she explained, and I will be showing you here. But also sometimes we cannot use the single package and we have to use other things. So basically, for the sake of this training, well, we can see that the COVID-19 DHIS2 is divided in this, as Victoria quickly explained, where we have basically one, two, um, track aggregate, we to, to, to count aggregate numbers, then we have something related to events, and then we have tracking. And if we go like this, we will see that the main problem we are going to be using during the training is the last one, case-based surveillance, because it contains pretty much everything that we will need for this training. So in this um, tracker program, you will be able, or it's been prepared to be used with um, program rules, it's been used for, it can be used for relationships, it can be used for uh, geolocation of data, visual entry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So at one point, when we give you access to the server later today, you will be able to tweak this program according to your needs or according to whatever we ask you to do and submit the exercises. We cannot do everything in this program. For example, this program is a tracker program and this academy, even though it's mainly focused on tracker, we want you to show, to see also uh, aggregate. And that's the reason we have here, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, let me see if I can put my, this one. So you can see here, we will be also using this for aggregate and uh, which we call support programs. And then we have also contact tracing and you will see why. Uh, this note actually you can dismiss because we are actually using 100%. I was not sure we could do this, but since the uh, package release uh, almost a year ago, I think of September, I will I will maybe confirm this later. At one point, we had to make a little modification on the program so it could suit all our needs for the training. But now we are following 100% the. Um, the official model. So whatever you saw, you see or you find on the system is basically just the program import. And you will be having one program for each of you where you can make all these modifications. Uh, Victoria explained quickly, but let me go very quickly again through this. Uh, and because I will refer later to a document where you can find more information about this. But basically, we have this, the case-based surveillance, where we uh, enroll and track suspected cases. And most of you have already followed a tracker uh, training, either with us or somewhere else. And you are used to set up the training. This was a requirement for this academy. So 
in this case, you will be making changes on this tracker program. And then we have these ones that I, well, this one I will not cover because you will see later on why we will be using it. And then the aggregate. One of these sessions, which I think is happening tomorrow or no, in, on Wednesday, uh, you will be using aggregate. And I said, you cannot use it. So you will be using this. Um, Victoria said we have a lot of documentation where you can find this much deeply or explaining much for a detail. So these slides are being are already published. So if you could go to the learning platform, you can download these slides. But also in the public agenda, you will be able to access these links. It's not that we're linking here something that is not publicly available, but in case you have issues finding these documents on our system, you can go here and, and download them directly. So basically, here we have the official documentation in these two links. And here we have added one thing we call the 1.2 metadata navigation file. This is a document that you can download it's a doc, uh, Google document. And basically it contains the information on this document, but summarized. And the idea is that you download it. And whenever you are making, or you are deciding which changes you want to make in your program in order to submit the exercises, you use this navigation file to mark things you want. For example, I will explain in the next session, but at one point we will be asking you to set some um attributes for this tracker program in a specific way so if you want you can have this document uh, you don't have to print it if you don't want but you can have on the screen of your computer laptop whatever and you can be there marking for example highlighting in yellow so these are the ones that you're going to be choosing etc et so navigation file here this is not something you can find on the official documentation but it's something that actually it's built out of this document. So you have it here. And if I'm not mistaken, yes, you have it also on the agenda. So please download it because it might be useful for uh, following this training. So going a bit more into the details and trying to bring these packages from the extra concept developed by the WHO and then by Victoria, uh, the team. If we see what are we doing with this program, basically this is the case-based surveillance for workflow. And it's been taken out of this document that you have here. If you will click here, you will see in much further details, everything like this. But I want just to present this very quickly because we will go afterwards like in different, um, let's say, little parts of this workflow steps. And then we'll see how this has been transformed from the concept to the HIS2. And we'll see where are we going to be making changes or where we're going to be um, registering patients, etc. Et et so basically, this is for the, the workflow. I don't know if uh, some of you have um, got COVID-19. It's, uh, you know what it is, very spread disease. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, what happens is that a patient will be registered and in order to determine if he or she is COVID positive, some lab requests will be made uh, where samples are taken via nose, via the mouth, et cetera, et cetera. And then this contact is usually, the contact first of all is registered, sorry. Then we go to the lab request and then we can follow, we can fill it more information. We can fill, uh, fill um, I think it's yeah, a case reporting form. We can fill more information. And at one point here, we will see how we can relate and we will see later uh, to different other contacts in case we want to follow, et cetera, et cetera. We can check the outcome and then we can see more things. Don't worry, this is going to be explained later in much better details. I think when you have access to the system, probably you will understand much more if you have not played with this package before. So if we have here, so the first thing we're gonna do is when the patient arrives, we are gonna enroll him or her in the system. And this is some information we're gonna be collecting. This is, the, this is basically based on the WHO recommendations. And these are the things 
we collect in the system. And on the first exercise that you will be doing, it's, for example, decide which ones you will be using. Uh, again, we give you a package, and this package is for you to play. We have based this package in the WHO, but then we are assuming that you want to tweak the system according to your needs. You can build it out of a simulation. You can imagine whatever. And for example, you could say for me, age cannot be important, for example. So you will be able to play with this. And actually, we encourage you to play with this so you see how making changes in the system reflects in Android and can have a specific behaviors that you might uh, expect in web, but you might not expect in, in Android. And you will see this in the, in the next two, two sessions. So basically, we have the enrollment where we have defined some attributes we want to collect from that patient. And then we have different uh, stages. If you have been working before with tracker programs, or you have been setting tracker, pro tracker programs before that you should have, because was a request uh, mandatory uh, requisite uh, to access this training, you know that uh, tracker programs have stages apart from the Roman, and some of those stages can be repeatable. And if it would be in a live session, I will be asking you to raise the hands if you can tell me why you think this is repeatable. Um, so I'm, well, I'm gonna give you now three seconds or five or 10 to think. So we have these four stages. We have the first one, clean, clinical examination exposures, and then we have a stage two and three, which are repeatable, and then we have the health outcome. So I'm gonna give you now some seconds to try to think, why would you think, and maybe if you want, you can reply on the chat, that the stage two and the stage three are repeatable. What are your thoughts on that? Why do you think that these are uh, stages that should be or can be repeatable? And it's not a normal state, not repeatable. Okay, yeah. That's very good. I cannot pronounce your name. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you have a short name for that, but uh, Murali Krishna Elakurti. Exactly. I think you are right. Yeah, that's good. You can call me Murali. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Thanks, Murali. Yes, so exactly. Uh, well, samples might get COVID. Don't stress it, yes, but also it's, a, I mean, a, a patient can get COVID several times. We might need to perform uh, the lab uh, several times because it didn't work, it got lost, it was not conclusive. We need to check. I don't know what is the procedure in your country, where I'm based now, which is Belgium. Sometimes we're supposed to take a test on the day three and then another one on the day 10, it's stressed. So this is repeatable. And if you see here, what, I've, what, what we have done in these slides, uh, so, I'm gonna, yeah. so if you see now here, what I'm doing is I'm taking kind of this workflow, um, presenting you here, and this is something you can see in the document, this you can see in the document, and then we have this, which this is an image, well, a graph that we have built. When we try to map, so here on the left side, you see the program, let's say, but we have tried to make like a legend on how is this uh, mapped to our DHS2 model. So, for example, here in this blue, we have a program. So when we access the system, you will find the COVID-19 case versus less program, but you also have this other program. So this program. Inside of each program, we have one enrollment because we're tracking. So if it's a tracking program, it has an enrollment. And then we have a stages. So you can see here in a bit darker blue. So we have the enrollment and we have these ones. Uh, we have some of these ones we have tried to represent here like repeatable because of the question I ask, and most of you reply properly. So lab requests can be uh, several uh, repeatable stage, the same for the results. And then we have one outcome. Inside of each program stage or inside the enrollment, we have uh, sections that contain data elements uh, on the tracker domain. So when we perform the enrollment, I'm going now back two slides or three ahead. If we go back here, these are the attributes. 
that we have. So these are the things that will be contained here. For the stage one, I'm going back on stage. This is the things we have. So for example, the stage one, I'm gonna read it quickly, but basically clinical examination exposures. So in this stage, we will record um, clinical symptoms and exposures, which include this. So symptoms, uh, what is the health status of the person, etc. We have this, this one, and this one. I will not cover them all because I think you, you get the point kind of. So, more links for this. So, if you go here, um, you can find the full description and documentation, the official one that we have included also in the links before, but we also have a um, link in the agenda. And we have made this 1.2 metadata file that we encourage you to download and have it next to you. So you can write down, maybe if you put on the Google Doc, you can make comments or in Word, whatever you use, LibreOffice, OpenOffice. So you can have a document where you see what are the changes you're making. And later on, you can see how this reflects the or not. And then we have also included here this YouTube playlist where these packages are being explained. I think this, um, yeah, 10 videos. If you have time or you want to, to understand much better why it is or how to use these packages, it's a very good resource. So you can find it here. It will link to YouTube. And with that, we're almost concluding because this is the word of the day. I, it was explained on day zero and I'm going to repeat it now here. As you know, we are tracking the attendance and the attendance adds up to a 10% of your final score. And the way we track your attendance, it's by marking what we call the word of the day. This means that in the learning platform, at one point, I think on the left side, you have different sections. And one of them will be the word of the day for today. So every day, you will be presenting some slides. And at one point during those slides, you will be having what we call the word of the day. So today it's open source. So you need to remember these words and you need to well, remember and write it on the form that it's available on the OpenEDX learning platform. It doesn't matter if you use capitals, non-capitals, whatever, you can put open source with first capital, everything capital, whatever. Once you submit it, if the word is correct, it will be added. So today is like, uh, so it's 10%, so it's a 2% if you put this word today, open source. Uh, this word is available, I think, up to 24 hours after the slides. Maybe I have to confirm this later, but basically this means that if you watch these videos on Thursday, when you try to put the word of day for today, Monday, so day one of the Academy, it will not be working because it's already expired. And we, the reason we do this is because we try to push you to follow the Academy more or less every day as we have planned. So, we give you 24 hours since we release the videos or the sessions. Um, like this, you don't have to do everything because we have found out that when you try to do everything, uh, the end opens, sorry. Ah, yeah, sorry. Um, yes, thank you, Omar. So as I was saying, we try to push you to, we encourage you to do this every day. Like this, you are more likely to succeed at the end of the academy, if you leave everything for the last day, probably you will have more difficulties. In any case, if you follow everything next week or on Thursday or on Friday, well, you are just losing the 10%. So don't worry so much. Okay, so someone is asking me, uh, what is the deal? I'm gonna stop the recording now because that's the end of the session. Uh, I will answer now some questions, but this is going to be out of here. So let me uh, stop the recording.